wait for all right so we're live now we're just waiting for a few people to to join well, I'll just before keep, we start talking about keep doing what I do the newest named character is this one gonna delete right after we do it no no, no those, okay, good. those are the Instagram lives this one's on Facebook on oh, purpose okay. so that we could have it recorded Oh. Yeah. So, tell, I mean, this is not the new character they painted. No, no, no. This, this one is, toothpick. is Toothpick, who's been around for a little while. This is a commission, actually. But I figured it would be a good place because the commission actually says all of the named characters. So I thought it would be fun just to do a little progress on this while we waited for a few people to, to roll in and then introduce you to... To the new character. Really, it's a character that's been around a while. Um... For those of you who know Playing Koi, which is a piece I did a long time ago, um, Not yet. Oh, yeah. Not yet. there's there's certainly <laughs> been a few uh, it's been around a while. So, um, oh, Melanie Jones, thank you for sharing the video. Oh, no, my pleasure. I'm happy that people no, no, tune no, in. No, 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 I'm telling her oh. thank you for sharing the video. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so just waiting a couple more seconds here for a few people to join before we make the the name reveal for the new character. We can say that it's a girl. Yeah. It's a girl character. Um, a we, bit of diversity. And what you're doing now is a commissioned piece. Yep. Oh, but. Paolo, thank you for sharing it as well. And this one has toothpick in it, but it's also going to have a new character, so he's kind of covering that bit at the moment, but I'll show it in a oh, second. Right. The ba the beginnings of it. And so Toothpick, though, has been around a long time, right? He's, he's, actually, oh, yeah. he's actually one of the original named, I guess, after, of course, the, the sort of the sort of the original Ollie three, which Bo. is Ollie, Red, and Bo, yeah. I Toothpick. really didn't set out to name them, but at a certain point, people are like, well, what's the what's the frog's name? And Because uh, they just, as a point of reference, like, someone want to, wants to write up a commission on the ladybug, and I don't know Yeah, which, but yeah it's a ladybug. Did, yeah, I was going to say, they, their names kind of began to evolve naturally as you yeah. created a group of friends along the way. And just, I like... I like natural. And you developed their personalities. And so I know we, we were recently asked what the the dog's name is. Yeah. Um, who has appeared a few times. And um, he's really still kind of under development. Yeah. I haven't painted him in a while. It's kind of a, a lab-like character, but I'm trying to keep it a little bit ambiguous because I think one of the fun things is that people can, can relate to characters like oh that's my dog or my kid or my the frog outside my window and I like that it's, it's a it's a happy little leaf <laughs> Diane says hey Rob hey <laughs> what's up hopefully that the sound of that um, air filter. filter is not too bad well it's kind of important folks will let us know if they can't hear you You've got yeah. this sort of. Um, I've got two of them giant, actually. Yeah, one on each side actually. One there. And they just one here. Blow air constantly and keep me in from getting getting paint fumed. But kind of industrial size air filters. <laughs> yeah, they they aren't cheap, but uh, health is more important. Nobody really asks me about those about air quality like students or anything it kind of makes me wonder if they're even thinking about it and really it's very important so Paolo says um, when are you coming to Walt Disney World when's the next well, technically I live on Disney property I was going to say <laughs> we're always there um, um, I think the do you have something July 4th um, weekend? you know I, I, I usually have shows in and around the holidays the major ones like July the 4th uh, we did uh, what was it Memorial Day yeah, just, just Memorial Day, he was at um, uh, Wildland Gallery over at the Boardwalk. Yeah, I'm definitely always looking for more opportunities to, to, to go to Walt Disney World and, and do my thing. Just because for me, it's a lot of fun. I love going there. You know, the whole Epcot uh, thing was, I was there almost every day because it was just so much fun. Oh, the Epcot Festival of the Arts. Festival of the Arts, which, thank you. 
we'll hopefully um, you'll be participating in again this next year. Oh, yeah, hopefully, we'll um, see. Just I mean, you never know because I guess I've heard this year, and you guys have probably heard it too, that it's going to be longer. Yeah, and it'll be running seven days a week. That's what they're saying. Yeah. It's a rumor. Yeah, and, and we don't have all the details. In all honesty, I, I won't be able to be there every day, but that's not to say that they'll require that. Yeah. Uh, but like Doris is saying, we're still very early in the process, so we'll we'll get around to it. Yeah. So, um, do you want to go ahead and talk about the new character? Yeah. So, uh, like I was referring to earlier, and I got the the, the smack of hey, not yet. Um, <laughs> Just wanted to give uh, time for people to get One of my favorite in. <laughs> pieces was uh, playing koi. I just love the whole above the water, or yeah, above the water with Bo, below the water uh, with this character. And uh, for me, it's a fun play. Um, They're similar. This one doesn't, it's not really the one from playing koi. I know, <laughs> but I've been refining the character. Okay. Much like you see Bo, when he first started, he was kind of spindly uh, when he was reaching for, for red. Um, and over the years I've sort of refined it because some things work, some things don't, uh, like, like this character, and I'll just say it is a koi fish, uh, yeah. um, and I'm going to name her Mizu, which is just Japanese for water. I, I wanted to go with koi, but that's too plain, and then I'm like, well, uh, what is a koi fish? So I looked up and it's, it's a carp. I didn't know that. It's a... Uh, a carp that has spots over the years they've just refined them so uh, eventually I, I just tried to get it to a point where it was colorful but not like to the point where it was had like a camouflage pattern but anyway uh, without saying too much more I, I decided to name Mizu so this will be her fish. first painting where she's officially named yep and she's the red koi right and and I, I, I I used to have an orange one. Uh, I think one was yellow. One was yellow. One but they was weren't white. Really, they were just one-offs. They weren't really yeah, and, named. And I'm not saying that Mizu can't have a friend or an you know an orange pal or uh, you know there, there's all different colors of, of koi fish. But basically, I wanted to just define it because I've had a lot of people ask you can hang it up there about um, about the character. Oh, up there. Okay. Um, follow. Well, hopefully not. Uh, if nothing else, I'll be cat-like with my reflexes. So that's Mizu in her first official named painting. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually working on a commission where um, I was asked to paint all of the characters and so I figured this would be a good time to introduce a new character. So she's in process here. Yeah. You know it's one of the fun things about what I do and what I have done in studios and stuff is character design and um... Ashley said she loves her. Oh yeah? Well, she'll be seeing more of her, that's for sure. Um... And to, uh, um yeah, go ahead, talk about her. Uh, basically, I, I, I love designing new characters because it just kind of takes me back to the days when I used to work uh, at big studios and um... It's, it's a lot of fun to, to, to define the personality, define uh, um, all the lines and whatnot. It's it's a when you're an artist and you're you're a character person. This is like like a dream come true. You know, like like doing like if you're into fashion and you you want to start an apparel line and all of a sudden you have that opportunity. It's like oh yeah, I want to get into it. So for me, it's the same thing. And I I, I would I tried to uh, do it sparingly because uh, I don't want to roll out a character and then have it not not work. Uh, or just not be popular, so I, I like to see which ones work and which ones don't. I know the dog's very popular, and there's a, a cat that people keep asking for, and but this is a character that's always been uh, a very uh, popular character ever since back in the day when I did playing Koi, which is one of my most popular pieces overall. And uh, like you said, the characters can you you kind of build on them over time? Oh yeah. Kind of develop their personalities, change the way that they look. You might sure. refine their 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 appearance, and uh, now she's. Ooh. I got it. I just just hang on the wall. <laughs> I have this habit of just leaning on my easel, and unfortunately, I forgot it was up there. Be bad if that landed in this palette. It'll be alright. Fortunately, I can fix anything. 
So these are the red koi with some sort of light colored spotting on yeah. her. I just. Uh, so what's her personality like? Um, a little bit like Bo, but um, kind of more of an observer. Think of think of her a little bit like Red, except more interactive. Um, and I, I like to think that Red. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Mizu's kind of curious about the above water world. So. She kind of makes her way around, but uh, you know, cute fish in a little pond wants to see what's what's above the water, and maybe Bo is that conduit. So for me, that's kind of the storyline I've been trying to go with. All right. So a question from Tony: Will you be at Disneyland anytime soon? Uh, I'm going to be out there for D23. Uh, I don't believe I have any official shows within the parks. I know my work's in a few places. Um, certainly, um, at the, at the, the uh, convention center, for sure. yeah, at the convention center. Um, I know I'm in off the page, and I could probably do something there as well as D Street with Star Wars. Um, but I don't have anything that I, at least, I'm aware of being in the works. But uh, always know that I'm asking. I'm always every time I, I I go out there or do anything with Disney, I'm always like more, more. And if you're not already, um, be sure to follow his events on Facebook. Yeah. You can subscribe to him, and it'll let you know um, when he adds an event in, right. in that's close to you. So but, if you, if you live out near Disneyland and he adds one, then it'll give you an, a little alert that he's coming your way. Yeah, yeah. We were just out there not too long ago, but for just for fun. Yeah. Doris and I had only gone out for um, I'll, I'll say work, but uh, you know. Not all work is work. A little play. There was a little play in there, but a little, um, a little, um just trying to get some ideas for a little battle things. for high score over on the Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brent says off topic. Um, I was hoping for some advice. I recently started using oil paints, and I can't get it to apply to the canvas smoothly. Right. Um, so it says, um, in fact, I started using my palette knife to get it to cover an area. Right, Do I need to yeah. use a different type of canvas? Do I need to prep it differently? Love the new character, by the way. I tried switching my medium because I love your live videos and want oh, to sweet. try. Yeah, um, it, it's, it was always something that I had trouble with, too. And uh, probably the best explanation is it's a combination of things. So if you have an absolutely dry canvas, and maybe I could just bust out one here. We'll turn this into a little lesson. Um, just, uh, Say a quick hello to um, Melissa, Hi, Melissa from Pacific Fine Art in Hawaii. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Well, welcome. We've heard uh, a lot of, of uh, I'm always having people, things about you guys out there. Always having people saying hello from out there, saying their thoughts. So thank you very much. It's, uh, it says, can't wait to tell the other ladies about me. <laughs> <laughs> all right so and karen says she's going to come visit you while you're in tahoe later this month oh nice yeah i forgot to plug that um going to be doing a little bit of traveling here coming up and tahoe's first up uh we'll be out there the 17th and 18th i think it's yeah. it's a saturday sunday 17th and 18th, 17th and 18th. This is a junk canvas, so forgive the, the dentage. Oh, but sneak peek. Sorry. <laughs> sneak peek. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people, you know, when you when you first do it, I mean, it, it really doesn't come off whatsoever. So uh, there's a couple different techniques, but uh, the most common that I'm aware of is just to take some paint thinner and do it like that. So you get instant coverage and uh, probably overnight to dry. But um, you can also use a flow medium, which is what I use, uh, and you get a lot better coverage, uh, a lot of pigment. And part of this is the paints you use, part of this is... So hang on, so this was with thinner, paint thinner. and that was with the flow medium? Yeah. Okay. So that's the, the palette he was working with. I guess that little gooey stuff is the flow medium there. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using a palette knife because what you're going to do is you're going to cake it on. And well, <laughs> Drop it there stuff. goes the iPad. Um, that being said, 
if it's your style to be a palette knife painter, then no problem. If you don't mind a lot of texture, no problem. But for me, I'm kind of anti-texture because I do a lot of glazing. Um, I don't like unintended shadowing. Like if I'm doing, uh, I don't know, um, Emma Watson's eyes, uh, if I cake on the white, she'll get a shadow underneath. And that's, that's bad. Um, so for me, I would rather start off like this where you just kind of uh, basically creating a uh, adhering layer because um, it's gessoed already you can gesso it again um, probably should I, I usually will sand it a little bit to get the paint uh, the canvas a little smoother and then gesso it again um, that being said you don't have to but you should um, and uh, you'll let this dry overnight and then what you'll get is a uh, canvas that is a little more receptive to the paint as far as adhering. It won't disappear into the canvas because this is like this is like paper when you pour like a napkin when your coffee hits a napkin it just goes uh, this is the same thing uh, it'll just suck it right in so I would recommend putting on a layer either with some kind of galkid flow medium whatever have you or using thinner and just I mean you could, you could literally just smear it on and it, what it'll do is it'll create a little boundary uh, an adhering kind of thing uh, and then you can come back later and then I don't know if it's gonna work yeah it'll 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 just be that much crisper when it goes on then you just keep keep applying keep applying and it doesn't have to be perfect but I also you I work differently than pretty much every other painter that I know in that I don't sketch so if you're gonna do this I think maybe uh, put it on super thin that way you can still see your pencil marks if um, they, if she if they do it that way yeah, yeah. Um, but I know a lot of people work that way so um, you could uh, you could pencil it on or then uh, like the old masters used to do where once you have it at this point you know if I'm if I'm painting uh, let's say we're painting red um, you know at this point you, you kind of just block them in and uh, this will dry overnight if you're using um, a very thin amount of paint uh, it should skin over to the point where a, a new layer will, will tack on it um, but this I call this blocking out but basically you're just kind of applying paint in a, uh, a way that um, will eventually be painted over so it's sort of like creating a, a road map uh, so that's the way I do it um, it's not necessarily the right way because I'm self-trained I don't know how many people know that but uh, my thing is uh, I look at paintings like like ink blot tests where you have um, you have a, a swirl some paint around and then oh it's a it's a ladybug or it's a dog or an, a, a koi fish or, you know so I, I'd say that that would be the way I'd suggest going and if you don't have luck with that then you know just keep trying and maybe something will come out of it you know uh, certainly that's how I learned. Uh, I probably wasted a few canvases that way, but did that help, Britt? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm I'm as long-winded as it gets when it comes to uh, talking shop. It's my favorite thing to do. She might not be there anymore. Oh, that's alright. She was. She was. Oh no, she's there. Cool. Um, <laughs> she says she didn't mean to take you away from your painting. No, no, I I get I love talking shop. It's it's one of the, my problems if I'm at a gallery or something. I will sit there and just keep yapping away. She said she doesn't sketch it out first either, so that was perfect. Okay, great. So, so. And she appreciates your time. Yeah, no problem. So I know we had a couple of questions that were asked prior. Let me just pull a couple of them here. I'll just keep All right, going. All right, so Janet. Hi, Janet. Janet said, does Bo have a lady friend? Uh, short answer is no. And the long-winded answer um is that I don't want to age Bo too quickly and once you get a girlfriend then there's talk of wedding and then there's kids and things of that nature so I just <laughs> I just want to keep them in that 
very innocent stage where there's not all the uh the, the complexity that a relationship brings and i know <laughs> a, a lot of people think of it like mickey minnie and i don't have a problem with that um but it does donald age daisy. them donald daisy <laughs> and we all know how happy donald is um <laughs> oh. so <laughs> I would just say that I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to uh, change the storyline from Bo exploring the world to uh, to that kind of a thing and and really I'm not saying never I'm just saying at this point there's so many stories to tell that if I open that Pandora's box then I can't shut it again. Make sense? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, Katie Marie asked. Um how did you get connected with Disney and Star Wars? Uh, well, I guess the short answer is I was approached. Um, there's a lot of different ways that that happens. Uh, mine happened to be that uh, I got I, I got on cruise ships and some galleries and was I was enjoying a lot of successes and the it is oh you're gonna kill me it's a small world in that regard where the publishers kind of know each other and that kind of thing so the the short answer is uh i was invited to do some demos and they liked them and well i'm still doing it uh and i think star wars had a lot to do with the fact that uh we were doing a lot with um you know, we, we had a lot of gallery successes, and they kind of had the same approach Disney did, and the new films were coming out, and so um, there's a lot of different ways of looking at it, but basically when it comes down to it is I have my own personal line that snowballed. And so, Katie Marie, I don't know if you um, are familiar, familiar with um, Medium, which, okay. is a, yeah, yeah. which is a blogging type site, I mean, but... Yeah, uh, it's a few articles. Yeah, um... I was just going to say, he wrote a whole piece about how he got started with Disney, so that might even oh, be right, helpful yeah. if you want to go check that out and just just read it. Um, if you just go to Medium and search uh, Rob Kaz art, he's, he's yeah. there. Kind of ramble off the page there. Vincent Strobel says, do you ever do classes? Uh, this is about as close as I get. Um, I, I don't necessarily look at it like a business thing. You know, I'm, I'm sure I could probably set up a paid account where I do videos and you tune in privately or whatever. I just, to me, I've always enjoyed going to galleries where artists were so willing to just tell me everything I needed to know that I don't want to uh, to do anything like that. But as far as classes go, I'm not necessarily the best teacher. I have a hard time with words sometimes, not necessarily pictures, uh, but... Uh, I, 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 for example, I went on a cruise ship where they expected me to teach some classes, and I was so nervous. Like, like anyone who knows me knows how uh, I am not the person who craves the limelight. Again, the Medium article I wrote about it. Um, but uh, that being said, I just, I don't know the words for things. Like, like I'm sitting here explaining how to do this, but I'm sure there's uh, a word for it. Uh, like I think it's a la prima which is that wet on wet style uh, but that's like I, I heard it in passing one day that oh I actually use the a la prima method sometimes <laughs> but I had no idea what it was called so I'd be afraid that I would teach people the hard way or the wrong way or something that would confuse them if they don't have the same style as me so like uh, you know a minute ago I was talking to some or explaining uh, you know, not sketching, and she just happened to not sketch either. But if someone did sketch, then that method might not work for them. But I don't know. I just, I feel like I'd be doing someone a disservice. But maybe, you know, I never say never. Um, but uh, quite sincerely, I, I just don't know if I would be confident to teach a class. At least not right now. Well, and I know you've said before that even though, you know, techniques or how to use certain products can be taught it's still I mean how do you teach vision you know it's all well, everybody has their own vision you yeah. know one person's style might be another person's you know different strokes different folks I mean, what right. do you like somebody else doesn't like and I'd be much more confident teaching 3d graphics or Photoshop or Illustrator or something of that nature because there's technical aspects to it you know like uh, you know I'm building 
if I built Bo as a 3D model in ZBrush uh, and I could export him to a 3D printer, I could teach that because it's 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 a flow where, like like Doris is saying, there's there's intuitive things that aren't necessarily quantifiable verbally where I could say, you know, now is the time that you would do this and that because each painting is different. Um, you know, like Bob Ross had a method where he did background, midground, foreground, happy trees, squirrels, house, done. I don't work that way, even though it's similar in some ways where I can say to come into this painting and do background, midground, foreground. Um, if if I'm doing light fog or things of that nature, um, that might come after the character goes in to blend it in. So there's each painting is different, but uh, really the best thing I can tell you if you're trying to learn is just do. That, that is sincerely the best way of learning. Where is Mizu for the people that are just joining? Where did oh, yeah. you put Mizu? She's, right. Here she is. Yeah. So anybody just joining, that's Mizu, and she's a red koi. Probably should have painted Mizu in this little experiment, but... Um, well, she's, you were painting her in <laughs> yeah. that one, I'll tell you what. Here. which is a, a commissioned piece. Yeah, I will change this up a little bit. All right, well, while you change that up, I'm going to give another sneak peek over here. Oh, yeah. That, that one's Sweet crooked, things. but, I mean, it's a little sad. I'm having a lot of fun with that, that house. It's a places <laughs> piece, but um, in all sincerity... And this one's not, none of these are finished. These are all still works in progress, and you'll know that because no signature. Well, even sometimes <laughs> signatures of and then not a given. This um, guy down here, I think, is going to be super cute. And we and we asked, when did you ask that? A few weeks ago. Oh yeah, I still, you know what did anybody think Bo was looking at, or Bo and and I had some really good people. You know, like a, a family of uh, of uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, Bat? Or no, 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 no. The uh, the nocturnal marsupials. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't remember it. Bats. No, no, they they have tails. They're mammals. They're um, not mammals. They're, animals, um, they're white. Um, oh my gosh! They they hang possums? from their possums. Okay, you. possums. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had a little brain fart there. Um, but uh, a family of possums. But the ideas were so good that some people were giving me that I'm like, well, I can't just throw them in that painting. I want to give them like their own painting because it's a good idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're oil paintings, so they, they can sit around for, for a little while while I'm thinking about it. And like that places piece with the, the shack, I'm having so much fun with it that I don't want to sit there and, excuse me, I'm just kidding. What? I don't want to, uh, I don't want to rush it and just throw it out. Um, probably one of the best advice I ever got as an artist was slow down. So At least in, on the individual says pieces. That, um, it's very cool to watch you paint. Very interesting. Um, I'm, and would you post the link to the article um, at Medium? Oh, yeah, yeah, we could so, do that. Yeah. After this ends, we'll just repop it out there. Yeah, I've got a few articles and um, maybe one in the future about uh, you know, criticism. Yeah, that's actually the next one that you had yeah. lined up. Was, was uh, and so the next article on medium is going to be what he's talking about is um about uh, I think you titled it taking, taking a, a hit. taking a punch or learning ten. to take a punch or something like learning to take a hit. Nothing's final. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it, it basically the what he's going to talk about is you know when people say they don't like your work, which yeah. I know you've come back from shows and you're like, so this person came up to me and straight said to my face, your art is not my thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, And I, you know, you know, it's not, it's not everybody's a, thing, but, but it's, I'm sure it didn't feel. <laughs> I, I have a pretty good memory for visuals. Uh, so I can't like watch, uh, gory movies or anything like that because I will retain them for a long time. Uh, but negative experiences I remember. And it was a, a Disney sh show, and uh, there were some VIP guests, and the room kind of cleared out, but one woman stayed behind, and she walked up, and she's like, Hi, Rob. I just want to let you know I don't like your work. Uh, I'm like, Ugh. And she goes, Somebody probably likes it, but it's not me. And then she walked away, and I'm like, 
Uh, Why'd you even need to tell me that then? You could have just not said anything, you know, <laughs> don't buy it. Hey, I get it. It's too big. It's not your thing. It's the wrong color. You, you like pop art. You, you like somebody else's art. Um, you don't like oil painting. I don't know. Just, what? I'll never forget that because it confused me. It's like, why even say anything? I mean, you tell kids, uh, you know, don't say anything if you don't have anything nice to say. And here's an adult walking up to someone who's literally doing it, you know, putting their life into into a craft and telling them that they're no good at it or that it's not their thing. That's right, Amy. <laughs> she said, Amy said her mama didn't teach her manners. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it was like, oh, I'll, I'll never forget her face. And, and not that I want her to feel bad, but at the same time, I felt bad. Jamie said it was a pleasure meeting you at Epcot Festival of the Arts. Oh, and, glad um, you came out. That was, was great to talk to you. Fun show. I, I really enjoyed that. Met a lot of a lot of very nice people. Did not. I had one interesting experience where I won't go into it, but it, it was not a happy moment. But um, other than that, I, I had so much fun there. So much fun. Bethany says, um, "How long does it take, or how long does a piece usually take you, and what piece has taken the longest, or was the most challenging?" That's um, a good question. Probably, uh, on average, I'll do a couple paintings a week. Like, I'm flying through this, but this is nowhere n done. Like, if the level of detail between this and this is many, many days. So right now, I'm just blocking out, and it happens to be working. Usually, it doesn't work. Usually, it, it will uh, get sticky and uh, or wet, uh, and you have to sort of lay it to the side, which is why oil painters typically have many, many pieces going at once because we move on to the next one. About yeah. three over there, one so, on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I, I, three over here that I just showed you a while ago. And, and there's, Oh, there's another one turned around facing the wall. Yeah, can't show that one. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Um, Something new. The, um, in fact, I can't show Star Wars anymore as far as works in progress. They're, they're uh, trying to, to, to um, just uh, make everything in line with the rest of their products so we're, we're trying to honor that by not showing any um but the uh, uh what was i talking about how Sorry. long it takes oh yeah thanks um the see how quick that happens it's just oof. um usually a couple a week uh but the the hardest one i've ever done speaking of star wars was someone had me do a surfboard and normally you know like oh that would be a fun thing and it, it was enjoyable once it was done um, but the, the real challenge was the fact that it, it's a, uh, a surface that's kind of concave, if that's the right word, but also once it's curved this way, so, so the board has a profile like that, uh, the, you know, the, the, so it, it, it's rounded this way, but then the board is, is shaped like this, so over the rails, so it's got that profile in the thickness, but it's shaped like that. So I had this weird kind of thing going on and the art that I was supposed to put on it was a tube. So I'm having to fake the look of a tube on a surface that's going the opposite direction in two ways. And it just, I, 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 I was doing everything I could from taping off and just standing back and staring at it for a while. Uh, it was so difficult, but once it was done, I think it really paid off. It really turned out well. You have actually got some video footage of that that we never did put yeah, together. Yeah, I, I don't. I think they they said don't 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 post don't that. Don't share it. Yeah. It was a commissioned piece, so yeah. if uh, you know if it was a sensitive, you know, sometimes people are painting something, or they if they let it if they let you know that it's for yeah. someone's birthday or something, then you yeah. don't want to show it and have the person see it. And I think we've talked about this before where, you know, I've done some memorial paintings and yeah. things of that nature yeah. that were requested that I not share. So, um, but anyway, long story short, that was so, very challenging. Um, Vincent said, have you ever painted a piece and said, I am keeping this one? Uh, a few times, but I never have. <laughs> uh, I've wanted to keep a whole bunch, but... Um, I've, I've said... You've said it, and yeah. we've kept it. And uh, there's some hanging in our home right now that are on my list of they don't go <laughs> they don't go to the galleries. Yeah, <laughs> which are you know, in, in terms of how many pieces I've done, they're they're just a couple. Yeah, I think we have uh, one in the bedroom. We have one in the living room. 
Um, None that I've wanted to keep. These are ones that, uh, that Doris wanted. That I wanted. That's what we used to do back when, um, you know, when Rob was still kind of, kind of green, kind of fresh, is he would paint things, and before they would be shipped off to the galleries, they would hang in our, in our home, and I would, you know, style them onto a wall somewhere, theme around them, whatever, and then his manager would come and say, okay, I'm taking that, 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 and that, and then my art would leave. And so then I would get new art, which was kind of fun because I would rotate out what we had. But eventually, you know, you got a trillion holes the in the wall because you're, you know, you're different nails for different size paintings and <laughs> just kind of a, kind of a frustrating thing. So there became a time when I said, this is mine. You yeah. can't have it. <laughs> I offered you two clays, but not have them. He's just got a hurt paw today. He's got a hurt paw. You can come on in, Bo. <laughs> Mom's gonna get on his little dog bed in here and lay down while Rob paints and there's the iPad that just crashed a while ago. Vincent said that you and Rodell have become some of his favorite artists. Oh, cool. Well, he's a, he's a good artist. So I appreciate that. Is this Mizu that you're? Yeah, sort of. I'm. I'm. Bottom down here? I, I literally had no plan going into this, and I don't know if it's working or not. And this might be one of those ones that just goes to the wayside. Uh, but um, I kind of like. You know, he's just kind of coming up and a little curious about what this other character who shares his color scheme. Checking out Bo here on the new finished one, the first one where Mizu's officially named. But I think this is about as far as it's going to go, just because, you know, it is sopping wet. Like, there are parts of this painting that are almost dripping. And I didn't want to, I don't want to go too much farther with it. But uh, we'll go back to this one where he's not... Uh, Watch that. This one is a finish in here that you're yeah. working on with um, just pick and Mizu's been added, and you're going to yeah. add several other characters to this yeah. one, right? Uh, this one, uh, I think they wanted all of them, so uh, I'm just trying to be be mindful that I want it to be a new piece and not something I've done before, and make a story out of it. And so maybe all the characters are meeting Mizu. Which is the name of that other painting. Alright. Oh, and Janet, um, I see you just popped in and asked about Bo having a girlfriend, and when you rewatch this, Rob answered it, but the short story is no. <laughs> <laughs> Not anytime soon, anyway. And, and I can appreciate the storyline there. Um, you know, romance and relationships are powerful um, but for right now I'm looking for innocence and uh, yeah. you know just nature things of that nature uh -huh. Uh -huh. just kind of walk it in the teeth Yeah, oil painting is really different from a lot of other mediums in that you kind of just put the paint on and then you can shape it. Uh, sort of like clay. In fact, I talked to a sculptor one time and we both had kind of the same thought that that individual was a, a painter as well. And we both compared oil painting to like clay where you, you put it on and then you can do stuff with it. If it's if there's too much, then it gets too muddy or it's out of control. Oh, I see, Janet. You said you lost your satellite, so you missed the first half. So just in case you missed the character, 
Her name is Mizu, and she's a red koi. I'm just painting her here, and there's a finished one over just down there. We'll go over here. Okay. So yeah. That's Mizu and her oh, first named painting. And then he was adding her here on this painting. Vincent asks, um, why oils over acrylics? I like blending. I also like glazing. And the two of them are remarkably easier with oil paint. Despite the fact that it takes a long time to dry, once you get the handle of it, you can be effective with that. Um, you know, it's... I used to use the analogy, maybe I will again, I don't know if it's a, if it's a good one, but kind of like a race car where um, you can drive it till it's unstable, but if you know how to handle it, you can you know where that edge is and you can go right up to it. So for me, with oil paint, yes, it, it can be messy, it can be uh, difficult, but if you get a feel for it, that you can make those negatives into positives. So, just just my opinion. Yeah personal preference, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, really, I've seen people do some incredible things with acrylic paint that might be a little difficult with oil paint. Um, but uh, I prefer oil, um, not the least of which is just the texture of the paint. Uh, and, and I'm a kind of a person who doesn't like to be rushed in the sense of um, if, if the painting's not working for me, I don't want to have to uh, you know, do it really fast, otherwise it'll dry. I'd like to go back to maybe an eyeball that I've done 10 minutes ago and be able to completely change it. Like I did with Red in that other painting where he was looking up and then I just kind of wiped the eye and now he's looking down. And there's no, no residual textures, there's no paint lips. Um, I mean, if you looked at this in profile, you would not see any brush strokes. You might see a little, uh, uh, little canvas bumps. What do you uh, mean by glazing? Glazing is when uh, you take a uh, either paint thinner and you apply it or, 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 or uh, some kind of petroleum distillate and you come over with a color and just uh, it sort of tints the painting. Um, it's it's kind of uh, where where I first heard the term glazing outside of my studio. I'm not claiming to have come up with it. I'm just saying that because I'm self-trained, things I discover have been invented already. Uh, like like the mall stick. I thought I invented that. Apparently it's been around since Leonardo da Vinci's time. Um, but, you know, live and learn. Um, and so glazing is one of those things where uh, it's it's like a photo filter in, in, in uh, Photoshop or Instagram or something. Uh, where you can change the color by applying a, uh, a pigment that is really fine so you can hue it in a different um, different color without really obscuring too much. So it sort of set a tone for the atmosphere? Yeah, the... so, so for example, uh, this is really early to be glazing a painting. I'm just kind of doing it, but it really just looks like I'm changing the color. But the blue is still showing through. Um, it's um, it's more beneficial like if you're doing portraiture and you want rosy cheeks without obscuring the freckles or um, things of that the, the creases of, of a face you can do a glazed pass of something like a, like a, a very uh, red color thinned out really well and you can just blush the skin without changing the details that you're not painting over it it's it's not opaque so glazing is is a fun thing to do if you are um, if you're looking to bring a painting into the same color spectrum uh, like sepia toning a painting you could you could paint something in black and white and glaze the color into it uh, little by little and you get a really depthy feel to it um, I was just on Instagram this morning and someone was um, painting something that uh, 
was was relatively flat, and then with a few glazed passes, have had it rendered and feeling three dimensional, almost photorealistic. And so glazing can be used in that way. But I tend to use it just for bringing colors into the same, feeling like it's the same world. Uh, but certainly there are tons of ways of, of doing it. So Ashley says, um, looking forward to seeing the finished product and hopefully you'll be able to share it when it's done. I think so. Well, this one? Not, yeah, yeah I don't no see why reason. not. Yeah. Um, and Hammer says, what is the best canvas to paint on? That's a good question. Um, I I mean, I have my brand preferences. My favorite canvas is the one that uh, James Coleman Studios makes, which I cannot get enough of, but they don't sell it. Um, and it is just, it's this canvas, and basically it's it has very little texture. And what texture does is almost like sandpaper instead of weave. And I love it, but it's hard to get. Uh, is this so one of them? This is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, the other brand I like is uh, Frederick's Blue Label or Red Label. Um, you have to test of those because they're so. Um, I, I don't. I don't like the, the the texture of it, but the weave is smooth. The Blue Series is smooth, so I like that one. But if you're a person who paints differently than I, then you might like a thick cotton duck canvas or something of that nature that has a heavy weave that would catch paint a whole lot more effectively. Um, so really that's a personal preference. The only thing I'll say is if you intend to, um, to, to sell it or if, you t uh, if, if you're doing something professional with it other than uh, having fun like I was just doing, uh, you'll want to do a staple back. So you can see the, the staples on it. Uh, that's so that if the painting gets dented or anything like that, you can restretch it. Where, you know, I've got a few beater canvases like the one I was just painting on. I, I, don't, I don't think I'll sell it just because of this reason, but it's got the, um, it's got that Michaels thing where it looks nice and clean, but if you wanted to go restretch this, you couldn't. So, I don't use these to, to paint on. I only use the staple backs when they're for someone. Have you thought about using a masonite board? I've used them in the past and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, obviously you have to seal it really well, um, but it's nice and smooth. I mean, I like smooth, but I also love, I love that, that drum. So I'm, I'm weird, it's, it's, I think it's just at this point what I'm used to. So if I were using uh, a board, it would, I'd be painting on it and I would get that bounce that you get with canvas. And I, I don't know, I've just grown to really love that. But yes, I have painted on Masonite. Hammer said that was a really helpful answer, thank you, regarding the type of canvas. Oh, cool. Um, Vincent also asks, um, who are some of your inspirations? Um, I have a lot of them. Um, I mean, really, I'll go in chronological order where when I was a kid, it probably was Bob Ross or my dad. Uh, I know it's a cliche answer, but, um, you know, my dad helped me with uh, facilitation. Uh, not just, you know, hey, don't, don't, here's how you clean a brush, here's this and that, but rather, you know, there was, there was art supplies around the house that if I wanted to, I wouldn't get uh, get in trouble for using necessarily. Um, I might get a hey, that was something I meant to use, or don't don't use the really nice canvas if you're if you're not going to be serious about it or something like that. But um, all in all, I'd say that that was one of the best things um, <laughs> when I was a kid. Your dad's tuned in. Oh, okay. You just got you just got some hearts. <laughs> I, I just just. Uh, let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> um, but, you know, I watched Bob Ross on TV, which helped with um, that a la prima style. Um, and doing things quickly. So that, that really helped in that regard. Um, the uh, As I got older, I'd say uh, when I moved down to Florida, I started going to art galleries. 
and watching people like James Coleman, uh, you know, Rodell, uh, I think I saw once, um, the, um, just once. The, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. Cause I, cause Back I went, then, maybe just once, but yeah, now. Uh, Walfredo was That's a really cool guy who w let me watch him paint. And, you know, there was no expectations, no like, hey, are you going to buy anything or are you going to get out of here? There, there's none of that. It's just people who enjoy art and uh, will answer any questions. And so I, I try to I tried to learn from that. So when I do shows, you know, even right now, I, I don't ask me anything. Um, if I can answer it, I will. You know, you don't need to, don't need to pay me or anything. Um, Neona says, "Hi, thanks for being amazing, and your art is so inspirational." Thank you. <laughs> um, Janet asks, "What do you do your small studies on?" Uh, the studies can be on a couple different things. Um, they're uh, it, depending where I'm at. If if I'm at home, I like to do them on. Uh, uh, it's called uh, deckled paper, which is just, um, I don't think I have it's any right now. It's a cotton blend, right? Yeah, or, it's or all it downstairs, but um, basically it's 100% cotton uh, that's been pressed and not woven and acid-free, and, and it comes with a color. And when I do studies, I, I started to, to do them on that, thinking it would be a little fun to do, and then um, some of the galleries I was doing them at were like, hey, are uh, you selling those? And uh, actually one of the first galleries that said that was Lake Tahoe, which I'm going there in a couple weeks. Um, and so I decided to just start uh, seeing if, you know, I could just uh, take some of those studies and maybe there's someone who wanted an original but uh, wanted something a little smaller or a little bit rougher. Uh, it's not a, they're not clean in the sense that no, I, I think Wait. all my paper's downstairs. What's that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. I know it's pink. That's probably why it's still up here. It looks white in the camera. Oh, okay. Basically, uh, these are handmade. Um, they have little imperfections, but I love them. Still, let me see if I can focus on it. So little little wobby sobby. Uh, it's got a, a little bit of a texture there. Yeah. Maybe if I turned it a little more, you can get more of that texture. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you can kind of see it. But uh, when you make paper, you put them in basket forms, and a true deckled edge is the bleed on that basket. So it comes up the walls of the press. And usually they're trimmed off on nice paper, but uh, on, on like printer paper or whatever. But for uh, what I'm doing, uh, I like that because the product in and of itself is. is a little bit more. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Zoo, for anybody just tuning in. That's the new character, Red Koi. It's a girl. <laughs> but that's just one of the the products. Um, if I'm if I'm on the road, it might be uh, uh, like a little small canvas panel, which is just instead of being stretched on stretcher boards, it's uh, laminated to a. Uh, an acid-free uh, backer. Yeah, Vincent says um, the best way to get started in collecting is the study work. That's a good. That's a good suggestion because they're, you know, they're a less of a, a monetary commitment. I suppose you know they're mm. less yeah. expensive and easier to frame. Um, he also says thank you um, again for the crayon sketch. Hey, my do you pleasure. remember the one you I did? I do. Yeah. For. Um, National Crayon Day, Crayola Crayon Day, and also your next boardwalk show. Well, we don't know the exact date yet. Historically, I've done July the fourth there, but um, I haven't heard anything yet. Um, and when I do, as we've been saying, it goes on my website. So anything I've absolutely confirmed uh, that I know I'm doing, that I have dates and times and all that, I throw on my website. Progress there. She's not really a baby, I guess. I just keep calling her a baby. She's she's a baby because she's new. She's a young lady. Um. Yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do a, a fish character. I've got Honu, who's a sea turtle, and um, 
What else? I guess that's the only water character that I've named. Well, I mean, you've got a duck. You've got an alligator. Well, I have. <laughs> that, that was one of the things I loved about Bo as a character is he can basically do anything but fly. And really, when you get down to it, if he jumped high enough, it looks like he's flying. Um, so I really love him in that way because he's so versatile. Because he can swim, and, he yeah. can be in a tree. And can... that's another reason I like Ollie because he can kind of do the same thing. Uh, in fact, eventually he will be able to fly. Um, so that that's always fun to have, especially yeah, yeah. as a as a as a character person. It's fun to have characters that can have adventures beyond the environment. Um, but you know, single Ollie dimension. But duckling, he won't fly, will he? Because he's still well, young. I'm not saying never. I'm just saying. You gonna let him grow up? Uh, see, that's. That's the, the argument about having Bo get a girlfriend and all that stuff, is when do you age the characters? And, you know, for me, I, I, I like to keep survival the fittest out of it, sort of like the Bambi mentality, where they're just, you know, they're all friends in the forest, uh, and they're all just, you know, nature is really the only obstacle, and that in and of itself isn't too bad when you have the, the mama owl looking out after you or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I like to keep these characters innocent. You know, I mean, we're looking at a giant alligator right here, staring down a koi fish, and Bo and Ollie and the gang will be around him, and I don't want anyone thinking that the alligator's just going to get hungry. You know, no. I, I, I don't ever no. want that to be a, something that happens. Um, you know, I, I would... He's always smiling, I, and I, it's not like a creepy smile. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I did some shows, these little doofusy. Yeah, toothpicks kind of doofusy. Um... But uh, I did some shows where, and, and I admit, I, I, I smirked, but somebody was watching me paint Bo with a lightning bug, and the, I remember this one particular gentleman with a deep southern draw said, well, in the next one, his mouth should be real big and be lit up, like, no. like he ate the, the lightning bug, no. and, and I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> you just, because that changes the story, you know. Well, Bo doesn't have a mouth even, so that's not even a yeah. concern. But, I mean, it's frogs in nature. Obviously, they they have a certain way about them. And, well, so do um, gators, but this is this is Toothpick. He's a special one. Yeah. And Bo's a special frog. So, for me, I, I guess uh, I'm trying to keep the storyline very innocent. Because, you know, eventually, uh, if we can find some time in the day, uh, I, I do still want to do a storybook. Um, you know, I've written a little bit, but uh, it's, I'm still not 100% about it. So eventually, um, you know, all these things will have dialogue behind them. And I don't want that dialogue to be, uh, you know, when Bo gets hungry, he eats one of his friends. <laughs> yeah, Amy says, yes, keep the innocence. And Andrea says, Bo doesn't have a mouth, and she's right. Yeah. And um, also, Andrea says that... Um, she loves Bo and his eyes remind her of her, of her late dog. Oh, yeah. can't talk about that. No. <laughs> Especially with Bo waylaid. Mm. He's got a little foot problem. Is that, is that, I see a dog in your profile. Is that the puppy? Is that the dog? That's Kira. No. I'm, oh, well, my I'm profile. Saying, I'm saying, I'm saying it to Andrea. Oh, oh, sorry. Or Andrea, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, but I see a little... It shows just a little bitty circle, but I see a little white dog there. Um, and also, let's see, Bethany said, Where do you get your supplies from, and what brand of oils do you like? Um, I buy from a variety of different sources. Most of them are online. Um, like, uh, like paints, for example, I buy from Dick Blick just because... It's my, um, I get a good rate for the amount of stuff I buy, but um, I will uh, freely say that I paint almost predominantly with uh, Williamsburg oils. Uh, shameless plug for them. Um, I'll but, say uh, little collection of Williamsburg over yeah. here. I, I discovered them a few years tons ago. That's a cleaner one. It's, it's owned one. by the Golden Company, and that's a big, big acrylic company. And I, I, I like them because up until then, I was buying old Holland 
and Gamblin and Holbein and some and of, like Old Holland super expensive. In fact, if you look up on the top row, you size, can still yeah. see some Gamblin caps and Holbein caps. Um, uh, the green one there, I think, is Holbein. Oh, okay. Yeah, I um, guess because the uh, the white cap would be that, that Williamsburg. Little, uh, polygonal hat or polygonal cap on there is a uh, is a Williamsburg. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I like them. It has an extremely high pigment load. They come in all kinds of colors, natural and uh, 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 synthetics. I use predominantly synthetics because I, f uh, with me, like the other filters, I want to be doing this for a long time. And so using things like lead and cadmium and, uh, you know, things of that nature that, that are somewhat carcinogenic, like no Prop 65 on any of my stuff. Uh, for all of you artists who have seen that on the labels, uh, basically it's the California code for having something bad in it. Like Disneyland, when you go into Disneyland, it says Prop 65. Um, something in there causes cancer. Um, Everything does. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, it's like, what doesn't? Um, but uh, with, with art supplies, you can still buy lead paint uh, because it works really well. But um, it also works unintentionally well on giving you some adverse effects if it gets in your skin. And I think you got rid of all of the ones you found in the house yes. that said lead on it. Yes. You no longer have any of those. Nothing. And you that can usually tell if something ago. is lead because it it's weighs heavy. ten times more than you, you, you expect it to. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I truly uh, want to stay healthy. So two air filters with the, you know, the... the removal of all the, the particulates. Uh, my paint thinner I use sparingly, and that's low VOC stuff, uh, vol volatile something, oxidized chemicals or something like that. Um, the re And uh, when I clean my hands, it's just regular soap and that kind of thing. So. Did you already answer the other part of our question, which was oh, um, where you get your supplies from? Uh, Dick, Blake, Dick Blake uh, uh, is, is where I get my paints from. Uh, like I said, I try to get my canvases through my publisher, but uh, I always feel bad asking uh, because, but they are so good. Um, but you do give them, you do get some scent from another place because I know we get tons of those boxes. I used to buy, when when they, they started charging sales tax and they started charging for shipping. And when you're buying like a thousand dollars worth of canvas, shipping can be hundreds of dollars. So I, I ended up switching from um, uh, another company, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna berate them online, um, but uh, they 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 lost my business because buying in bulk wasn't enough to offset the shipping. I mean, I could buy full retail and have it be cheaper after the shipping is included uh, or not included, depending on who we're talking about. But uh, definitely, if you're buying from a brick and mortar store, you're probably going to see a premium added. Uh, for paints or for art supplies. Um, I think the one I cringe the most at is seeing paint thinner. You know, you, you see a gallon of it for like 80 bucks at Michael's or something and you could go to the hardware store and get the same thing or better for like five bucks. And I don't and mean to... still be the low box stuff. Yeah, right? and still, yeah. well actually it'll be better. Be, uh, there's one that was like, they call themselves green or something? Like yeah, that. I've it's messed around with the, yeah, the, the citrus one, which holy moly does that stink. Uh, but supposedly it's Novak, but I don't use paint thinner enough to really worry about it. I just kind of drop my brush into it uh, to, to sort of rinse it off and then um, that's basically it. So uh, in all honesty, it's, it's, um, it's not something I worry a whole lot about. Oh, Andrea says that's not the one she's talking about. That's her new puppy, Bailey. Well, that's cool. Sorry like for the name. other puppy. I know that's sad, but I'm glad Bo reminds you of your puppy, hopefully in a good way. Um, we've got, um, oh, Britt says, how do you set the price of each piece? It is it something you decide or does it come down to the gallery? Uh, when I first started, this was a big, big question mark, you know, how much to charge. And I'll joke a little bit before I get into the serious answer that uh, when you're first starting out in art, and even really for many, many years thereafter, you will get like a fraction of what you hope for. 
uh, per painting. So I, I joke that if, if you want to set a price, uh, take the number you the bare minimum of what you want and then divide it by half or a quarter uh, because that's truly where it is and the worst problem you'll have is that you sell too much art you know uh, people be like oh it's a great deal I want to buy one you know and uh, as an artist that's what you want I mean I think the only thing I would say don't do is give it away I don't believe that artists should give away what they do uh, because you know we have bills to pay as well so um, I know that's on your list for another medium topic later that you were yeah, going to discuss you know it's really one tough thing to, to, to donate art for a cause it's quite another to just you know, just give it away people people are constantly asking you know can, can I just hang your art in my shop I'm like well, <laughs> yeah, well it's like I, I'm yeah and, and there's nothing against you know a retailer wanting to do that but when somebody asks it for free like well I, no I mean there was a particular case and you know again we won't name names right now but there was a particular case where um, they had asked initially said that they wanted to sell your art but what we later found out after you'd already hung your art was they just wanted it for decoration in their yes. sh in their store that was a long time and ago and so um, the art was reclaimed and yeah. you know that's not cool I mean you, you wouldn't ask for a um, you know a, a cl somebody who sells clothes to just hang their clothes in your window for decoration they want right. to sell their clothes so but getting back to the cost um, you know really I do it by size some people do it by well, actually you don't set it at all just well, to be well, just to be clear you, you don't say when I prices. say I I mean your your the system and galleries yeah. work together to determine the price right so that's that's the end answer of I don't set the price the gallery really does uh, and the publisher working with that gallery those galleries um, and I've also come into when do you increase prices because I've seen a few of them now uh, and that is another really complex thing that even if I went into it it's specific to your situation so if you're selling like a madman and you can't paint them fast enough obviously the prices have to go up uh, but at what point uh, you know maybe it's just where your career's at like I'm a, I mean I like to think I'm a young guy and all this so uh, I could work hard and I really do enjoy painting but in the end if I have no inventory then that's a problem of a different sort that that pricing really does come into play but so far I think I think we're in a good spot right now at least, at least I think but I don't make those decisions that's why I have people that do it for me Andrea says your work is worth every penny spent <laughs> thank you <laughs> um, and Bethany said thank you for the answer that was very helpful I think that was in regards to the um, the, 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 the paints, yeah, and the yeah. supplies. Um, Vincent said, what do you prep your canvas with? Uh, usually just um, Liquitex gesso. Um, it depends on the canvas I get. Like if it's the one from Coleman people, I won't do much. But if I'm doing like, uh, like the Fredericks Pro Series that has a weave that... Uh, you could literally sand something with it because it's so thick and harsh. I'll take a very like a like a thousand grit piece of sandpaper and just file down the tooth of it, and then I'll gesso it with the Liquitex. Um, that works really well for me. And then there's the days when I really want that tooth, so I'll just quick gesso it and uh, get a really gritty feel from the paint. I try to avoid the dry brush effect. Uh, where, and I don't know if you can zoom in really close, it happened here. This is such a smooth canvas that it's hard to see, but you can see where it's hit the peaks of the canvas, but not the valleys. I, I try to avoid that. I like a much smoother feel. So if you move down here, to me, that's a, a more even thing. So I'll, I'll fix it where you just were. Maybe you can see the difference. And yeah. So now the dry brush is gone. I, I just like that smooth feel. Um, Somebody's screaming in there. Yeah. And the other one's barking. The other one's barking. Um, so. Anyway. Um, Britt said thank you for the time you spent to answer questions. And off to work on all paintings now. Right? <laughs> well, have fun. Happy painting. Happy painting. Um, Happy little trees. I just love environmentals. 
and that's one of the reasons I paint with oils is to get those in that, that those I used to know the technical term but I call them God rays where you're, you're basically creating the effect of uh, oh, I missed a comment from your dad of atmosphere he said sketch a storyboard for the book right <laughs> Sorry, you were talking about the rays there? Yeah, the, um, it begins with the letter C. Uh, kind of something or other. These things. Where it's sort of like a, d a dense fog. Like, probably the best example is if anyone's been near a forest fire, uh, the, the particulate in the air kind of creates this uh, almost like underwater feel. And I really love it even when... Uh, you're in, you're in water. I love using these rays because I love atmosphere. And when I worked in animation, uh, one of my jobs was a, as a lighter. And I uh, we had a new version of the software that came with environment fog. And it was like, oh, um, are you kidding me? And and it opened up this whole box of of fun for me where I could um, create the illusion of. A really rich environment with photoreal effects used on whimsical characters and I'm still kind of doing that today. Uh, Vincent said thank you for the answers and letting us look in. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm getting a lot of work done. <laughs> I mean realistically speaking I, I'd be doing this by myself with some music plan if we weren't doing this. So. Anthony said don't care about the technical term it's now God rays. God <laughs> rays <bad>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I invented that. I'll, I'll take claim this time. At least until someone corrects me. Somewhere you heard that. Yeah. Um, but really, they're just photoreal effects. Um, like uh, subsurface scattering. Uh, that is a technical term for you know, like when light goes through your ear and you see the pink. Um, that's the that's called subsurface scattering. Yeah, I don't know if you can. No, I, I don't even want. Won't even no, try to reproduce okay. it. Um, you can see the pink. Oh yeah, <laughs> but basically the light is passing through the object, and I love using that too. So even in the water here, there's a little bit of that where it hits. It, the deeper you get, the more the light is diffused. Um, that is also something I learned in animation. Um, because it was a, a button or a, a settings you would apply to an object and you had to calculate all the photonics of it. And uh, here I could just paint it in. Oh, I think Chris found your term. Yeah. Uh, crepuscular rays? That sounds like it. I knew it kind of had that hard C in the beginning. Crepuscular? Crepuscular. That, that is the, the technical term. And now you know why I couldn't remember it. I saw it on somewhere in the internet. Usually I'm pretty good with information and retaining it, but that was a little bit more than I could handle. <laughs> I cannot pronounce that. God rays. God rays. <laughs> Crepuscular. Anyway, the, uh, the whole idea is that there's, there's environment, and you can use them in water, so if you wanted to use a <laughs> god yes. ray here. We will stick with god rays. <laughs> Basically it's just sort of um, like like the, 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 f the transmission of light through that object is being interrupted. Either by lily pads or what have you. By teeth from the gator. Just get that little, little effect. For getting back to that question about oil painting um, and why I like it, this is still wet from when I did it earlier, where acrylic it would be absolutely dry and all this would be a dry brush effect where because it's oil paint and it's still alive, uh, the paint is still workable. Like even, even here, I mean I can still blur it out even though it's kind of sucking it in a little bit. Um, 
all this reacts to the green that's already there and I can kind of work it in, you know? Blend. Blend in, yeah. Uh, like I said, forgive the yeah, non-technical terms. <laughs> the, the, the whatchamacallit into the thing, thingamajig. And um, that's why he won't be invited to give any lectures, like lectures at any universities. <laughs> right. I did I did go speak in front of some classes, but at the last class I went to go speak at, they, all they wanted to do is rip me apart for how bad Madden was that year. And I'm like, I didn't even work on it this year. No. I'm EA. Yeah. Um, Vincent's asking if you'll show it when it's completed. Yes. Yeah, why not? Some of them I can't, but this one... Well, this is a commission, but yeah, um, as far as we know, there's not any... Uh, not any reason. Yeah, it's not a licensed one, and it's your own character, so. There's really no reason. Vincent said, I'm sure UCF will have you. They've never asked. Well, you've done art for them. Yeah. Well, I've done art for the athletic department. Yeah. But not the school. Somewhere over there, you've got a painting hanging, and then the, um, the painting is, of course, transferred to the floor of, the of that. Yeah, that. Um, I think they, call it, they still call it, is it still Carl Black? Yeah, that's the sponsor. the sponsor. Carl Black, Col Gold, Black, Black and Gold, Gold Cabana. Cabana. Yeah. It's a long name. <laughs> it, it, it was called something else that was so much easier to say in the beginning. I don't remember now. But, uh, yeah, that was a fun project. Challenging. It was like 90 foot wide piece of art. And I did it in, I painted the first half and then I... Uh, vector painted to get to the final result. To um, get the teeny, teeny, teeny details. Yeah. You know, and you and hid a bunch of stuff. Remember, you hid like right. um, little Easter eggs that you know the, the school would the school would know what yeah. they were and what they meant. But uh, for something that size, you have to do it in vectors so that it's infinitely scalable. And it was it was challenging, um, not as challenging as the two hundred foot wide banner they wanted. That was that was interesting, um, but uh, oh yeah, around the inside of the stadium. That right. was I think the previous, previous year, year before. But yeah. I, I enjoy vector art. Uh, I'm a digital artist by trade. Well, now I guess you could say I'm fine artist by trade. But for about twelve years, I worked strictly in digital. Painting was a hobby, and um, so like if if. People have any questions about Photoshop or or Maya or Sorry about that. things renders like I know how to use Render Man at least the the, the version whatever 2.0 Render Man for Maya um, you know I, I still play around a little bit here and there uh, but uh, so let's um, I've got another question from Amy and then okay. if you want we'll if anybody has any more questions. Pop them in now, and yeah. we'll go ahead and uh, call it after everyone's questions are answered. If dinner's coming, isn't it? Um, autumn, I love that. Well, the dogs, the dogs not dinner. mine. Forget me, <laughs> um, the dogs. Amy says, uh, do you have a favorite part of the painting process, coming up with the idea, in the process, when it's finished, etc.? This is really my favorite part, where the idea is there, and I can start populating the world. And I'll liken it to like playing with Legos or something like that, where... You've got the bones, and now you can start set dressing. Um, and uh, for me, that's a lot of fun. And you can add more characters. So, you know, if I want to put Ollie in, I can do that. If I want to put Bo in, I can do that. Uh, like, let's say Bo's right here on on Toothpick's back. This is the part of the painting where I can I can do that. And if I don't like it, I can take it out. You know, I actually put Bo here uh, a few minutes ago, and I, I just painted him out because I didn't think that was right. But that's why this is my favorite part of the painting is because I can do whatever I want. I'm also doing this fairly quickly for the sake of the camera. One more question from Bethany. 
digital art question. Do you use a computer art tablet and what kind do you like or what is good to look for? I used to use a Wacom. I still have one, the widescreen version. Um, you kind of have to when you're getting to a point where you need to do hand-drawn things. Um, there were guys at EA that used them for everything. They had a, a Wacom tablet for just browsing the internet. Uh, but they were that's their comfort level. Um, I prefer a mouse except for everything for hand-drawn stuff so a Wacom tablet was where that would come in and like I said I, I still have it. I don't really use it as much as I used to. Um, we are in the process of starting some merchandise here and I use the Wacom to do some uh, sketch effect uh, Beauregard. So it, it, it was all vector but it looked like he was sketched. But I had to do that with the Wacom. Um, I, when I was, I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but when I was working in animation, the Cintiq version came out where it had a screen right on it. And uh, a buddy of mine uh, showed me the iPad Pro with the, the pencil and had me try a, a piece of software that was, um, it was vector, but it looked like raster and I really enjoyed that, the iPad Pro. Uh, makes me want one, but I really don't have a use for it since 99% uh, of my products are fine art pieces. And the other 1% being that you've just been using it to, to begin to make the, uh, the, merch. the merchandise. Yeah. Or like, you know, if you go to my website, um, I created a, a animated version of Bo in the top right hand corner. So robcazart.com you go to the top right, I think on all devices, except maybe yeah. a Nokia flip phone, you should be able to see yeah. uh, Bo blinking mm -hmm. and kind of looking around a little bit. Yep, he's on all of them. It takes a little while to, to animate, so I, I really only had a few hours, and I, and I cranked out um, Beauregard kind of in, in motion. And uh, mainly I did it because it was fun. But uh, I really do miss the days of working and creating uh, stories and, and animation and things of that nature. So it's a little bit of that vicarious living, living the good old days. The new sculpture is coming. Yeah. <laughs> so many projects, so little time. Um, I did create a bow. Um, that uh, I intended to sculpt and cast. Well, he is, this is the sculpted cast version, but uh, I kept getting a lot of artifacts, and now he's green. Um, but basically, he would sit on the edge of a canvas like this. Hopefully, on a, a frame he would painting. stay, but this is so thin. Um, he would sit there, and then I, I had sculpted. Um, I was gonna say, let's put him on a. What did I just step on? It's a piece of... Put them on the edge of that. Yeah, there we go. So he's on the edge of a, ca a canvas, I mean a, a frame of a painting mm. hanging on the wall. And there would be red in front he's of him. got so many lights on him you can't tell, but he's got his eyes and all his finger. And, and yeah, red was going to be mm. like... And right really here. the problem is that it so much goes into one casting because of all the errors in my poor model making ability that... Um, I need some time and resources to really attack that and make a product. But as of right now, it's on the back burner. I have way too many commissions uh, that I need to, to finish and... Hardy har, Chris. What? <laughs> you said don't break your foot. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, do not <Yeah>. jinx me. Vincent <laughs> uh, so. said um, he, he asked because he remembered you doing that. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I fully intend to, uh, but like all things, uh, I'm, I'm just running up against time. And as of right now, like uh, even this, I'm trying to catch up on a commission. Um, and then, you know, I have that show in Lake Tahoe coming up. And uh, beyond that, this summer is going to be really busy with Comic-Con and D23. And... Uh, so uh, show, I think I think we're doing the Chuck Jones in San Diego again. 
Uh, maybe maybe Irvine at the uh, the Spectrum, the Village Gallery. Maybe. I think you're back out to New Jersey. I'm I'm really? going to be at New Jersey. Well, at least New Jersey in December we were talking about, and then Comic Con in New York we were talking about in I October. I think that's October. That's um, with um, the Kincaid Gallery out of Paramus. Yeah. Um, great great guy, um, John. Uh, thanks so much for his support. Um, but uh, we yeah we've been doing really well up. Back in my home state, no complaints. Um, and uh, probably some, uh, probably some more Orlando at the uh, the Wyland Gallery. I would ex I would expect some some other shows. We we do that big Disney showcase we just had, and I think they do another one. Um, so we'll see. Uh, again, we always post as soon as we know for sure. We post them. Yeah, so in case um, you didn't miss that, or in case you weren't here earlier when we noted um, the, that Facebook has a, I don't know if you guys know, but Facebook has a, an option to subscribe to events for a page. So on Rob's page, if, or on his Facebook page, if you go to events, there's an option to subscribe. And if you do subscribe and Rob posts an event that's going to be near you, then it'll automatically send you a notification. So if you live out in California, it'll... It'll say, "Hey, he's coming out to, you know, to, to whatever yeah, Anaheim <laughs> in in July or whatever," um, which is true, actually, for D23. So, um, so that's a good way to keep up with us. Bristol says, uh, "Did you submit to become a Disney fan artist, or did they approach you?" I love this piece. What are difficult for um, me? The, the short answer is, I didn't uh, apply, but like all things, you do demo pieces. Uh, I was asked to submit some demo pieces, and um, we uh, we had a show and they uh, out at uh, their their facility and they sold them. Um, oh, that is here. And uh, no, that, that's eh. there's no easy answer when it comes to how to be a Disney artist because I had established my own personal line of artwork that. We're showcasing right now in order to uh, is that here? Oh, is uh they haven't knocked um in order to get to a point where disney would even talk to me i think that was yeah okay so <laughs> let me go ahead and wrap then since we've got somebody out the door. um but you can check out deliveries. medium um crystal he did a he did an article on meet on media um explaining how he became a disney artist all right, I'm going to hand you this. Oh, okay. Turn the camera around on yourself and sign off. Yeah, we've got a package, so. Um, yeah, basically, uh, we're going to wrap it up. I Thank you for coming. Um, hope to do this again. I'm going to try to do more with, uh, like, especially with new characters or things of, of uh, my fine art side. The license stuff gets a little trickier, but we'll, we'll do what we can do. Uh, to make that happen and uh, hopefully uh, maybe more of you will join us and have questions and again you can message me anytime I try to answer as many as I can uh, and then Doris handles some of the ones that I can't um, but always know that you can contact me so uh, I'll see you later bye